Tonight's story is the story of a little boy who got lost in the airport. Where? Which airport do you mean? Which airport? Let's say it was London Airport. Yeah. Heathrow, Heathrow Airport in London. Heathrow Airport, yes, let's say Heathrow, which is in London, or as near as makes no difference. Once upon a time, there was a family who went on holiday. It was the mummy, daddy, the little boy called Aidan, the little girl called Bridget, Bridget. and the big brother called Jonathan. Oh, and a brother called Jeremy, yes. So quite a lot of people went on holiday together. And they went to the seaside. And they all had a lovely time at the seaside, but then it was time to go back. So to go back, they all had to fly back on the aeroplane from where they'd been, which was Spain. Or they went to Mallorca in Spain, actually, Mallorca. So they flew back from Mallorca on the plane. And as they went through passport control at, in Mallorca airport, everybody had to show their passport, sir. Daddy showed his passport, Mummy showed her passport, Bridget showed her passport, Jeremy showed his passport, Jonathan showed his passport, and little Aidan showed his passport. And the customs agents let them all onto the plane because they all had their passports. Mummy and Daddy said to the children, look after your passports very carefully, don't lose them, because if you lose them, you won't be allowed back into England. Anyway, the plane eventually landed at Heathrow Airport and everybody got off the plane to get ready to go through the customs. There were a lot of bags and things to pick up and everybody was a bit confused. So one by one, the family lined up at the customs and showed their passports. So the inspector looked at the passport of each person, first at Daddy's passport. Yes, that's fine, you can go through. Then Mummy's passport checked it, the photograph agreed with her face. She said she could go through. Then Jeremy's passport, that was fine. Then Jonathan's passport, then Bridget's passport. And then Aidan arrived. All the other, everyone had gone through except for Aidan. Aidan started to look for his passport. He felt in his pockets, but it wasn't there. He looked in his bag, but it wasn't there. And he couldn't remember what he'd done with his passport. And the man, the customs man said, well, you can't come into the country. You can't come in unless you've got your passport. So Aidan looked and looked and for his passport. Meanwhile, Aidan's family had all gone on and got into the car to drive home, having completely forgotten that Aidan was not there with them. So everybody, they all drove home and didn't notice that Aidan wasn't in the car. I mean, after all, there was Jeremy there, Jonathan there, Bridget was there, Daddy was there, Mummy there was there. There was a lot of them, and a lot seemed like everybody. Nobody noticed that little Aidan, who's sometimes very quiet, wasn't there. So poor Aidan was stuck in the airport looking for his passport. He looked everywhere. He looked at his socks, he looked at his underpants, he looked up his shirt, looked under his arms, looked at his backpack, looked in... All his pockets checked everywhere, but it wasn't there. And the customs man said, well, you can't come through here without a passport. You'll have to go and find it. So off he went to look for his passport. He looked everywhere on the floor. He looked around. He even tried to go back to the plane to check if it was still on the plane. But the stewardess wouldn't let him on the plane. No, no, she said, it's not on the plane. We always clean the plane after everybody gets off. There were no passports here. So he wasn't allowed to get back on the plane. And he kept looking and looking and looking, but he didn't find it. Soon, nighttime came, and slowly but surely, the airport started to empty. There was just little Aidan left, all alone, and a few customs officers left as the gates shut down. He didn't know what to do. He started to feel hungry, and he started to cry because he was all alone in the airport. He was very hungry. Luckily, he went to a McDonald's and the man behind the counter saw him crying and took pity on him and gave him a hamburger and some chips and a drink of orange juice. Poor Aidan didn't know what to do. 
the whole night he stayed awake looking and trying to think what he'd done with his passport. He really couldn't remember for the life of him what had happened. He just didn't know. The next morning he went back to the customs officer and said, I still haven't found my passport. I really don't know where it is. Can you let me through? Please let me through. No, no, said the passport of the customs officer. Nobody comes in without a passport. That's the rule. Poor Aidan, he was crying his eyes out, but nobody seemed to care. All the people were rushing to get home from their holidays. Not really interested in the little boy who was crying. And of course, there were lots of boys crying in the airport. Children cry in airports anyway. So one more, one less, just didn't seem very important to most people. Just like another child, and they, they didn't even wonder where his mummy and daddy were. And once again, he got hungry. This time he went to a Kentucky Fried Chicken, and they took pity on him and gave him something to eat. A bit later in the day, he was hungry again, and a lady felt sorry for him and, and when he told her what had happened. And she said, ah, here, let me buy you a sandwich and a drink. So she bought him a bottle of water and a cheese sandwich, which he ate with relish. The poor little boy didn't know what to do. Then he met a lady who said, well, why are you crying, little boy? And he said, my mummy and daddy and my brothers and my sister have all left and left me behind in the airport from one day. And I'm all alone and nobody will let me out because I've lost my passport. Oh, said the lady, you poor thing. Does your mummy and daddy know you're here? No, they went away and forgot all about me, he said. There's so many of us. We're four children in our house and they obviously didn't count them. Oh, said the mummy, don't worry, I'll call your mummy and daddy and explain where you are. What's their telephone number? Well, little Aidan couldn't remember his mummy or daddy's telephone number. I don't know, he said. All right, she said, well, we can always perhaps look it up in the telephone directory. Now tell me, what's your mummy and daddy's surname? Uh... I'm not sure, he said. Okay, what are their Christian names? Well, my daddy's called Clive. And my mummy's called... Helen. Helen. Okay, we're getting somewhere, said the lady. Now, what's their surname? I don't know, said Aidan. Okay, so where do they live? Uh, in London, I think, but I'm not sure. Maybe in England. Well, said so the lady, Eng London is in England, and London's a very big place. There's six million people living there. That's not going to be very easy. Whereabouts in London do they live? In a house. No, I didn't mean that, said the lady. I meant, can you be a bit more precise? Do you mean they live in Kensington or Knightsbridge or Fulham or Soho or Westminster or D Dulwich? Or Dulwich. Yeah, Dulwich, for example. Which part of London do they live in? I don't know. All I know is I live in a house with a garden. Oh dear, said the lady. This is worrying. I don't know how we're going to find your way home. I would love to stay and help you, but I can't stay any longer. I'm in the airport and I've got to catch my airplane. So nice to meet you and bye-bye. And off she went. Now the little boy had no one to talk to again. Was really, really sad. And still his family hadn't yet noticed that he wasn't home. And the second night came... And everybody in the, left the airport, and the airport was very, very quiet and dark and lonely. The little boy wanted to go to the lavatory. So he went to the lavatory, and just then he remembered something. When I got off the plane, I went to the lavatory. Maybe I put my passport down in the lavatory, he thought. So he rushed back to the place where he'd been to the lavatory, and there, sure enough, on top of the lavatory seat, was his passport. Ah, oh, he picked it up and he ran as fast as he could to the customs man and said, I found my passport, I found my passport. All right, so the customs man checked it. Yes, sure enough, it was Aidan. Okay, you can go through. So he went through and looked around, but the airport, it was nighttime and the, almost everybody had gone from the airport. It was dark and lonely and there was nobody there. He went outside to the car park and there were just a few buses with their lights on and the odd car driving past, but there was no mummy or daddy waiting for him because they'd all gone back to their home, completely forgetting about him. If he had a telephone, he might have telephoned them, but he didn't. He didn't know what to do. Just then, 
he saw a policeman. Excuse me, Mr. Policeman, said Aidan. I've lost my mummy and daddy. And the policeman said, oh, really? That's very careless of you. You should take better care of your mummy and daddy. No, no, no. I mean, they've gone. I don't know where they are. Well, said the policeman, you should watch them more carefully. Well, I'll be off. Have a very nice evening. No, please help me. Please help me. What? What? Help you how? No. And then Aidan explained the story about how he didn't get through with his passport and his family didn't notice he wasn't there and they'd gone home without him. Well, said the policeman, you'll tell me where you live and we'll try and see if we can find a way to get you home. I don't know where I live. I live in a house. Well, that's not much hope. help, said the policeman. Everybody lives in houses or a flat. Tell me, which part of London do you live in? Oh, I don't remember. In England, yes. I live in London, that's all I know. Well, said the policeman, that's not very much help. There's six million people in London. Could be any one of the six million houses here, maybe. Now, tell me, what's your mummy and daddy's surname? I don't know, said the little boy. Well, that makes it a bit difficult. How could we find out their surname? Now, let me think, said the policeman. Do you have any ideas how he could find your surname? Uh, Clive. No, that's your daddy's Christian name. I know, said the policeman. If we look in your passport, we'll find your surname, and your surname is bound to be the same as your mummy and daddy's surname. So the policeman looked in the little boy's passport, and there, sure enough, he saw the name of the parents, well, of the little boy, actually. And the parents' name was Poo Poo. I saw, I see now. Your name's I done Poo Poo. Oh, Aiden done Poo Poo. Aiden Poo Poo. Aiden Poo Poo. And the policeman started to laugh because it was a very funny name. So you, are your mummy and daddy called Mr. and Mrs. Poo Poo? Oh, yes, said the little boy. That's right, my mummy are called Mr. and Mrs. Poo Poo. <laughs> What's there to laugh about? Poo Poo. <laughs> Oh my goodness me, what a funny name. I hope that, I hope nobody's thought of that when they say their name. Well, said the people, now at least with their name, it's a bit unusual name, uh, and you know your daddy's name? What's your daddy's name? I don't know. Right, let me think. I'll see if we can find somebody called I don't know Poo Poo. And so the policeman started looking, <laughs> looking at the telephone book. He said, no, there's nobody in the telephone book called I don't know Poo Poo. So he said, all right, well, let's try your mummy's name. What's your mummy's name? And the little boy said... I don't know. He said, ah, same name as your daddy. That's interesting. Poo-poo. Well, there's nobody called I don't Poo-poo know Poo-poo in the dictionary. Oh, is her name Poo-poo Bottom? <laughs> no. Well, said the person, I, that's not much to go on. You'll have to give me more. Poo-poo. They must have a... They must have another name. What's their Christian name? What's your daddy's Christian name? Poopadaw. Really? Said the policeman. I think you're pulling my leg. So the policeman then decided to see if he could find a way of finding who the little boy was. So he called the cheat the police station and said, Look, I've got a little boy here who's lost. Says he's been stuck in the airport for two days and nights. And his mummy and daddy have forgotten him completely. There's, that he can't remember his mummy and daddy's Christian names. All we know is that they're called Mr. and Mrs. Poo Poo. Yeah. But there could be a lot of poo poos in London. No, poo poos are in, in your bottoms. What about in London? There could be a lot of Mr. and Mrs. Poo Poos. The poo poos. Poo poos are in your bottom. Right. So, anyway, the policeman said, What we can do, he's talking to the police station now by telephone, what we can do. We can ring every school in London and see if there's any schools where somebody didn't come to school yesterday. And if we find that somebody happens to be called Aidan, then we can ask the school who the mummy and daddy is. So that's what they did. The police, the, they, the policeman took the little boy Aidan down to the police station and then one by one he called all the schools in London. 
Hello, said the policeman. This is the police station near the Heathrow Airport. I've got a little boy here who hasn't been to school for two days. Do you have any children who didn't go to school? And some schools said yes, some schools said no. And every time they said yes, he said, Oh, could you tell me the name of the children who didn't go to school? And they said, Oh, yes, we had a child called William didn't go to school. We had a child called Charles didn't go to school. But nobody said we had got a child called Aidan who didn't come. Until finally, in desperation, he called a crash. Hello, I've got a child here called Aidan who hasn't been to school for a couple of days. Have you got any children who didn't come to the crash for the last few days? Oh, yes, they said, we only got one called Aidan didn't come. Aha, he said. He must be going to that crash. Now, can you tell me what the name of the mummy and daddy is? And the crash gave the mummy and daddy's name. And then the policeman went to the phone book and looked them up in the telephone book and telephoned them. Ah, uh, hello, he said. Hello, said Mr. Poo Poo. Ah, uh, yes, this is the uh, Sergeant... S Sergeant Longnose. And I've got a little boy here who says that he might be your son. He says his daddy and mummy's name is Poo Poo. You're Mr. Poo Poo? Yes. Do you have a son called Aiden? Oh my goodness. Where is he? He's with me. Ah, oh, you know what? We came back from the airport. We didn't think that we were all there, but we didn't know who was missing, said the daddy. Have you got my little boy called Aiden, Poo Poo? Yes, I did. I have. So Daddy Poo Poo went to the, got in his car and drove all the way to the airport police station and got his little son called Poo Poo. Yeah. And his little son called Aiden Poo Poo, not Poo Poo. Daddy was called Daddy Poo Poo, Mummy was called Mummy Poo Poo, and Aiden was called Aiden Poo Poo. Yeah. And that's how Aiden they got him. Aiden Poo Poo, no! Aiden Bottom. Would you prefer, would you prefer to be called Aiden Bottom? Poo poo is eating bottom. Mm. I'll call him. Well, I, that might keep people away from you, but it's a good idea. All right, I'm going to name you Aiden from Poo Poo's bottom. Ah, nay. Okay, good night, my little boy. And you sleep tight. This is the end of the story.